This is Let's Talk with me, Dishan Kumar. We are continuing the conversation about uh, mental health. And uh, let's move on to the health facilities in Malaysia. Do you think there are enough facilities in Malaysia to treat mental health in Malaysia? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> that was my immediate response. <laughs> we don't have enough Experts. human yeah. uh, resource. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, I think that's one the of manpower the manpower required. Manpower required. And then, of course, the facilities as well. Some of the facilities are pretty drab. Mm. Um, I mean, if you go to a psychiatric ward in a general hospital, uh, you're already suffering from a very serious illness. It causes a lot of disability. Mm. And then you go into a ward where it's, it looks like a prison. Mm. It's got bars, it doesn't have a, a cupboard for you, doesn't have any curtains, and your privacy is not uh, respected. You know, so I think we can do a lot to change that. Mm. I mean, we have Institute Jantung Nagara, that's for heart patients, heart patients yeah. but we have nothing for people with mental health problems. Mm. And we know now that disability from a mental health problem is almost just as bad as disability from a heart problem. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I think there's a lot that can be done. Uh, we do have now a lot of private centers. Uh, we have rehab homes, private rehab homes, and also private clinics, uh, holistic clinics. So the options are there, but Insurance doesn't cover for mental health problems. How, how does the insurance come into when you are having uh, solace, in solace especially? How does that play into part? Of well, actually, some f insurances do cover, but not the local insurances. Not the like local. You, said, yeah. you know, the, the American, I think there are a few Australian, American, British, English, uh, UK based insurance companies do cover. They actually recognize addiction as mental health issue or even mental health issue comes under the medical uh, insurance coverage as mm -hmm. well but unfortunately here I don't think we have that yet mm -hmm. though I believe now people are allowed to use the EPF to pay for some uh, uh, illnesses right mm -hmm. but there's still a gray area there but definitely not for addictions unfortunately mm -hmm. we've not gone to that stage yet okay and um, we have to talk about the facilities we're talking about the facilities in Malaysia mm -hmm. and it's sad to see like, a very uh, common uh, location for facilities in Malaysia is in the major cities. Mm. Uh, people in the major cities have access, like you were, we were talking about it, all, all that facilities and mm. hospitals and things like that. But what about people in the outskirts? Mm. If I'm a person in a kampong uh, where there is not, there's no facilities and I know there's a problem with me, what can I do? Mm. What is the process that I can go yeah. through? So I worked in Sabah where we had two psychiatrists for a population of three million. Uh, my colleague, you know, because he was my senior and he was there for many years before me, as soon as I came said, Philip, why don't you do the travelling? Mm. I would travel every month to the other parts of Sabah, all the other cities, and see patients there. But I can only see them once a month. But we had trained medical assistants and nurses. We trained them to assess and manage the acute cases. Mm. And you know, they call us and get advice, and then we'll come and then discuss with them. So that's what we can do. We don't have to have psychiatrists there mm. or psychologists there in a kampong area, but we can have trained nurses mm. or trained paramedical staff. Mm. And they can be a huge resource for mental health problems. We know now that mental health problems in rural areas are just as high as in urban mm. areas. So why are we discriminating the rural areas? Exactly. So do you think facilities should be set up in outskirts or should there be more trainings to uh, nurses and things like that to handle mental health? I, th I think the first step would be training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to say that because setting up a facility is it's, it's a big thing, it's a big process. Mm -hmm. you know? First of all, the funding, mm -hmm. the money, the funding, where do I get the funding? Then the next thing is the licenses, you know, mm -hmm. all the red tape and all, it's a big thing. Mm -hmm. But if you can train people and put them on the ground, then that will help at least create an awareness in, in the kampung, like you said. Yeah. So it's empowering the resources that empowering you already have. Empowering people, yeah. exactly. We have to talk about Solus Sabah, uh, the addiction treatment retreat. Uh, how was it, the development, the whole development, the whole idea? Mm. What actually happened? What was the whole process? Why did you want to do it? Why did you want to open an addiction treatment retreat? Well, the motivation was pretty much why, why, what we're talking about today. At that point of time, we started about five years ago. We are now in our fifth year. There was not many places people could go to seek treatment. Mm. Now, at that point of time, my practice was in Singapore and I was, I was working and training in Singapore. And I realized many of the Singaporeans would go to either uh, Australia or, or Thailand or you know, near, nearby places. 
and they, they couldn't even go to Malaysia when we were just across the border mm. because there's no proper facility that could do that. Okay. So that was the initial motivation to do it. And then, of course, I needed a team of experts. So people like Philip and a few other friends, we got together, we sat down, we spoke, and then we needed a team. So that's when I realized not many people in Malaysia were actually addiction trained. Mm. Even psychologists or counselors were not addiction trained. Mm. So we needed to train people. So we brought in foreigners to help us to start up. But now what we are doing is we are training people. So we are, we are offering courses. We are training the local university students. We are taking in interns to ask them to come and practice and get themselves specialized in, 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 in addictions. You know? mm. So they can go out and help others like in the kampongs, in the, you know, mm. empowering them to go and offer their services elsewhere. Mm. That's a form of um, giving back because I think at the end of the day it's about lack of expertise also. Yeah, that's true. And um, let's break it down now. If there's a person watching this show right now who thinks that they have a problem or they have a family member who thinks who they think they have a problem, what should they do? Yeah, so I think the important thing is to maybe reach out to their own general practitioner or their GP or their primary care doctor. And most primary care doctors now are already trained or undergoing training for identifying and understanding mental health problems. Mm. And then from there, decide whether the person needs to be referred to a psychiatrist or a psychologist. The sooner the treatment, the better the chances of recovery. Most of our patients have suffered with their illness for years. And sadly, you know, they may have gone to traditional healers, BOMOs, and you know, all the other gamut of therapy and treatment that's available in the country, and only come and see the professionals later towards their illness. Mm. Sometimes it's a bit too late. Sometimes yeah. it is. Because there's a lot we can do at the early phase of the illness. Mm. We can actually get people to recover completely. Mm. But they need to understand what are those symptoms, who should we see, who should we get help from. There are NGOs that actually run websites that provide this information. The Malaysian Mental Health Association mm. has a website that actually shows where you can find mental health help uh, wherever you are in the country as well. All right. So thank you, gentlemen. We'll take a short break. Uh, next up, we are actually talking about a topic uh, from uh, the World Economic Forum and uh, we'll get uh, our guest thoughts and uh, we'll see you after the break. This is Let's Talk.